And that, my friends, is why you don't want to be sugar addicted because you don't want the diabetes. Much love, and I'll see you guys in that next one. And cut. Ah, oh, thank God, finally. Oh yeah, come Papa. All right, time to get this party started. Oh yeah. Two days, day one, eating pretty clean. Day two, standard American diet. I'm wearing my continuous glucose monitor right here. So we're gonna track our blood sugar across every single meal. Let's see what we can learn. All right, first meal of the day, breakfast, 11 o'clock. We got asparagus, we got three egg whites, one whole egg, some cherry tomatoes, some garlic, and a little bit of avocado oil. I'm uh, just drinking water. So this is probably not gonna spike me too hard, although I am gonna probably be hungry and then I'll have maybe a banana or some blueberries afterwards. But regardless, I'm gonna log this using the Levels app. Levels is kindly sponsoring this video. And this allows you to really keep track of how your exercise, your sleep, your the various things that you're eating influence your blood sugar. So just watching your blood sugar is one thing, but then interfacing it with an app that's gonna give you insights based on your behaviors takes it to the next level. All right, so still a little bit hungry. Got some raspberries here. This is the thing that is most likely to spike me because this is the uh, this has the most carbohydrates if you aren't counting the the fiber and the asparagus. So make your predictions. What do you think I'm gonna hit? Moment of truth. Did you guys take your guesses? So it's been a little bit over two hours, and I got a stable response that is a score nine out of ten according to levels. I got up to 112, and now we're already back down to the 90s. So when they're giving a score, they're looking at things like how high do you spike? How long are you outside of your target range? And that's what's factored in. So that meal, pretty good. So your boy has been trying to gain some weight and that's why it's been only three hours. This is my last meal, but I'm gonna eat yet again. And this time for lunch these days, it's normally meal prep. I get it delivered every week. And I normally take two of their bulk size because you know, I'm trying to get like a thousand-ish calories. And this is chicken alfredo pasta. We got some chicken, spinach, lentil penne, so it's gluten-free, alfredo sauce and parsley. And make your bets. Well, I think it's good. my bet is 100 and high 120s, maybe low 130s, just based on the fact that the last meal was like, you know, 112 it was a pretty safe meal. What do you guys think? Cameraman, what do you think? Oh, like 140, 150? No. Doesn't have that much faith in me. All right, let's see. I oftentimes get food comas in the afternoon, sometime around this time. I've noticed two patterns. Like number one, usually, but not always, it's when I spike pretty hard and I come back down with a reactive hypoglycemia where my blood sugar goes below baseline and then comes back up. So that's one thing that seems to be a pattern. The other thing is just the size of the meal. So if I'm eating a, uh, a smaller meal, the composition actually may, may or may not be high carb. I'm less likely to feel it, but if I eat a massive salad or a massive whatever, I'm more likely to experience it. So, but after eating this, I'm gonna swing by the gym. We'll see how I feel. Right now I feel great, but um, yeah, keep you guys posted. Yeah, so I just got back from the gym. The last meal was, uh, I guess it's not giving me a score, but we only went up to 111, which is one lower than for breakfast. And part of that, I mean, this meal definitely has way more carbs, but I'm using lentil pasta rather than uh, regular wheat-based uh, pasta. And in the meantime, let's do a protein shake. My protein shakes are pretty boring. Just some vegan protein powder, throw a banana in there. Some, I do almond milk, because these guys are just, it's literally just almonds, water, and salt. No other nonsense. And then some either frozen blueberries or strawberries. For this video, we'll do blueberries both days just to keep it consistent. Previous meal, which was the chicken alfredo pasta, we got a seven out of 10, which is not as good as breakfast, but we only went up to 111 
versus 112 for breakfast. But then there's also things like how long are you elevated? How many spikes are there? Is it just one? Is it multiple? Etc. Etc. So seven out of 10. This might have normally spiked me more, but because I had breakfast three hours before and that's still in my digestive system, it's slowing down digestion. So then the next meal gets digested at a slower pace, which tends to blunt the, the spike. So I'm not too surprised with that. Workout was not that intense because I'm on a deload we die. Messed up this knee, and then I'm also just on a deload, you know, because every six or seven weeks, Coach and I uh, program in a deload. So because it's a deload, I'm not going that intense. I probably did not deplete my glycogen stores. So when I'm having the smoothie, I might spike more so than normal compared to if I did a really intense workout and then had a smoothie right after that. So we got some bananas, blueberries, uh, spinach, almond milk, and vegan protein powder. Um, but I'm going for a walk and that walk should help uh, blunt the response. So let's see what happens. All right, all right, last meal of the day, dinner time. So I went to Hummus Bowl, it's one of my favorite spots. It's like Mediterranean food, Chipotle style. And I got some chicken, some lentils, and a whole bunch of veggies and some sauces. Never really spikes me, it's pretty clean. One of my favorite places to go when I don't wanna you know, cook myself, but eat pretty clean nonetheless. So overall today felt pretty good. Like I'm eating a lot of small meals. I didn't really have any spikes or troughs. And not surprisingly, my energy has been pretty constant. Not much waxing and waning, which is what I prefer, especially if I'm trying to be productive. So I'll see how this goes. Keep you guys updated and stay tuned for tomorrow. It's day two, but let me tell you, yesterday I actually ate my leftovers at 10 o'clock because I got hungry again but it wasn't too bad. So normally at night, melatonin inhibits insulin secretion. So I was concerned that I would spike harder, but it looks like I only just kissed 110, went back down. We got a seven out of 10 for that meal. That was pretty late at night. But today we're doing the standard American diet or some close approximation of, so we got some donuts. Hashtag Marika, hashtag diabetes, let's go. All right, so taking a photo real quick for levels, donuts and almond milk. And I can't remember the last time I had donuts. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of excited because I have a sweet tooth, but I just don't allow myself to indulge that sweet tooth in this kind of way. I'm splitting this with my videographer. So we're each doing, we had six donuts, we cut them all in half. So we're doing three donuts each. These some good ass donuts. I am disgusted with myself. I have this like the lingering sweetness. Like, Donut one, I was enjoying, but after the first donut, it was, I was like, why am I doing this? The things I do for you guys, all right? So I'm predicting I'm gonna hit like 180, 190, maybe even 200 plus, because first of all, it's like pure sugar and fat. I guess the fat actually slows it down slightly, but also this is the first meal of the day I've been fasting since last night. So there's no food further down in my system to slow down digestion. So it's gonna be higher now versus if I had donuts around dinner time, as an example. Take your bets, take your guesses, and I'll keep you guys updated right after. All right, so it's been 40 minutes since eating those donuts and I feel tired. I, I feel like I've done this take now four times because my brain is so foggy and I can't think straight. So I'm not even sure what I'm saying, but um, the food coma is real. It's not just when you have reactive hypoglycemia. I've also noticed it just when you're on the up and up, right? So peaked at 139, coming back down, now I'm at 134 and um, it doesn't feel good, man. Two o'clock, time for meal two. We got sushi burrito with white rice, plenty of carbs. Looking at the last meal of donuts, I got a one out of 10 as expected. That's the lowest score you can get, that's pretty bad. So we went all the way up to 139 and we actually had a double spike. So um, if you double spike, that means first of all, that was a very challenging food, but then it also indicates that the person who has the double spike generally has better metabolic fitness versus if they had just a single spike. I'm still feeling the struggle. I could not get much work done this afternoon because I was just so sleepy, lethargic, just brain fog. But time for the next meal. Let's go. Got my workout in, got my herd in, and that previous meal, the sushi burrito, four out of 10, and I had multiple spikes, so I spiked 118 within 30 to 45 minutes. And then I spiked again up to 127. That was 90 minutes later. 
So I wonder if there's like some combined effect with the donuts from earlier and then this thing, you know. Um, anyways, time for a protein shake, which I generally do after every workout. I don't weigh things by the grams, but I'm gonna eyeball, do roughly the same, go for a walk, and cast your bets. What are you guys thinking? All right, so what an experiment. A couple lessons. Actually, the main lesson for me that I wanna share with you guys is how it's not just your long-term health, right? It's not just, oh, repeated insoles, repeated spikes are going to cause insulin resistance, eventually metabolic syndrome, diabetes, etc. It's how I felt in the moment. So that whole, my whole morning and early afternoon was shot because those donuts just crushed me. The food coma was so strong and I didn't even feel normal until I got to the gym. So that's the first learning. Some other things I wanna share with you that I've, I've talked about in previous videos. Exercise is the cheat enabler. So when you look here on my levels graph, I was up to 140, it looks like. Yeah, 140, I started my workout and I quickly dipped. That could have been a coincidence, I'm not sure. But what I have also noticed is that because when you're exercising, you're, you're mobilizing glycogen, you are going to be able to handle a lot higher of a uh, sugar burden. And if you wanted to, let's say, have some cheat meal like ice cream or whatever, doing it right after a really intense workout or right before a really intense workout really <clears throat> blunts the response that you have. But anyways, probably not gonna be eating like this again in a long time. Final meal of the day, dinner time, day two, we got Chick-fil-A. My first time ever having Chick-fil-A actually. So we got some waffle fries, I got this deluxe sandwich, no cheese, because the cheese doesn't sit well with me. I got three chicken tenders and all this sauce as well. So not gonna lie guys, there have been many times today when I'm like, why the hell am I doing this challenge? <laughs> I feel like death, but this is the last one and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And stay tuned, I'll let you know how it goes. Morning after, and Chick-fil-A gave me a four out of 10. I got up to 136 mix per deciliter, was out of range for 68 minutes. As expected, not the healthiest meal, right? So overall, when you're looking at Thursday versus Friday, Thursday I had no spikes, no spike time, average glucose was 97 mix per deciliter, and variability was nine mix per deciliter. When you look at Friday, I had five spikes, almost an hour and a half of spike time, 95 mix per deciliter for average glucose and 14 for variability. So obviously you do this long-term, having these repeated spikes is not good for your metabolic fitness, not good for your metabolic health. But the thing that was very surprising and really drove the point home for me, even on a short-term basis, is how I felt on Friday, which was the standard American diet day. So Thursday was the healthy day, Friday was the not so healthy day and I just felt so drained. The food comas were real. I just didn't feel as sharp. It wasn't just the energy level, but I also just felt kind of dumb, <laughs> which was not fun. Overall, don't want to have to eat like that again for a long time because it was not enjoyable. But anyways, thanks again to Levels for sponsoring this video. They're the ones who provide me with this CGM and they have this really awesome app that helps you learn from your diet, from your exercise, from your sleep, from all these various habits in one single app. So check them out with the link down in the description below. Much love my friends. Let me know if you found this video helpful, if you wanna see more like this, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Nope. Peace.